god, no! Why is the music so loud? Oh, my fucking ears. Nope! Oh, hey there, everybody. I bet you've never seen this game before. It's March of the Eagles. You know it's gonna be a good game when the only graphical option is whether or not you can have trees. I'm sorry, Steam. I'm going to have to refund the game because I can't handle all the trees. Oh, no. I fiddled with the tree button and now i got to restart the game. I'm paying the price for fiddling with the trees. They were pretty confident when they put this game out to add a mod button and a future DLC button because they're... they're <laughs> there aren't either of those. Oh, correction, there actually is some DLC. We got the British unit pack and the French unit pack. That's... <laughs> What? One ninety nine for an eternal life of happiness. I'm getting those. Boy, hopefully no more fucking restarts. Anyway, guys, welcome to March of the Eagles, a game that released, I'm pretty sure, between CK2 and EU4 as a bit of a bridge between. And before you get that little pumpernickel in a twist getting excited that there's a game in the Napoleonic Wars made by Paradox, I'm going to immediately disappoint you by letting you know it's a bit fucking shit. But of course, I'm just a bad kid that doesn't know how to play the game, but I am really quite into my Napoleonic history. Ah, oh, great battles fought between glory and honor. Many men being thrown into the slaughter, only to be led to a massive downfall where you get exiled to an island away from everybody to make hearts of iron fall. I mean because you did some war. Um, and this intro to the game is, I'm making March of the Eagles sound really fucking boring. Hold on, let me just get my YouTuber hat on. Whoa, 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 welcome back, my gravy babies. It's me, I Sorrow Productions, ready to bring you back to the Napoleonic era. But before we do that, make sure to hit the like button for more March of the Eagles. Hit the subscribe button and I'll do a subscriber giveaway. Uh, if I hit 212,000 uh, subscribers, I'll become a March of the Eagles channel and give away a copy of March of the Eagles to one of my great subscribers. All you gotta do is subscribe to the channel, like the video and leave a comment down below letting me know exactly how much you love March of the Eagles. Get in there before it's gone, my gravy. <laughs> Oh god, the cancer's spewing out of my throat. <laughs> Hints and tips, get the fuck out of here, March of the Eagles. I'm a seasoned Paradox player. I think I know how to play this fucking game. Oh fuck, I got no idea what I'm doing. What is that? What does that mean? Yeah, screw the haters, all right. March of the Eagles, I think, is going to turn out to be a real fun game for all the family. We're going to have a good gay old time, I think. So the way tech happens in this game is that you've got these little buttons, you get these little points, and then you put your points into the little buttons, and it gives you technology. Also, if you're wondering where that whole mana system came from, from EU4 and now in Hearts of Iron, I think I found the fucking culprit. Boy, now that I... I've got this advancement, I'm sure to have the upper hand in combat. So another feature we're not that fond of in EU4 that we now have a place to blame is the coalitions that I'm assuming they got the idea from this fucking game, or you know, just the fact in history there were a lot of coalitions, which the, the majority of the game seems to be you form your coalition against mostly France, and then you will gangbang them from every side. Which, you know, is pretty good. You, you're kind of like you kind of like a good role play of Britain during the ages, where you're just throwing money into the crowd of peasants, thinking, Oh, you fuckers, dance and fight for my entertainment and eventual global domination. Well, I've set the coalition. We've got Portugal, Sicily, and Russia, and some fuckers down in Germany, but they don't count because they're too fucking small for me to care about. And France, be worried. Ah, oh, the mighty British army has landed in the Netherlands, our first target from here. We shall move on to the French and take them out with ease with our great British penises. Oh, wait, the uh, the French are turning up, but they don't, they don't seem to look that worried, which is kind of making me feel... A, a little bit worried. Wait, what? Oh, well. You guys are fucked. <laughs> well, that's fine or whatever. I lost a few guys. What does it even matter? I'll just build some more, alright? Sure, you killed like 200 
thousand British people. But that don't matter. It's the war's not over. Okay, that second chance now. We've built our second army. We're, we're down in Spain doing the work. We're, we're managing to take quite a bit, of, quite a few cities down here. But I think this time we've definitely got it covered. There's no way in hell the French are gonna push us out of Spain now. Come, come try me. All right, we're seasoned. Oh. Oh, I'm really fucking sorry, Porsche. I'm really fucking... Ah. Yeah, unsurprisingly, that didn't go too well. Yeah, uh, okay, so that's, that's... You know, we're back in we're back in the Netherlands. We're giving it another try up here, and this time, I am confident that we're going to absolutely demolish the French. I have lost... Uh, 400,000 people? Yeah! I have literally no idea why I'm winning. I was losing... And now I'm winning. I have no idea what changed in the world for me to be able to win. But sure, I fuck it. I think we can all agree that Britain wasn't harsh enough on the French after the Napoleonic Wars. What we really should have done is just helped ourselves to Northern France. Great Britain rules the fucking waves. And Northern France now. So not only do we own the waves, we own Northern France too. It's a fucking good one. Oh, apparently that's the end of the game. <laughs> The whole game was me losing, completely getting demolished, and then out of nowhere, I won. For what avail? Okay, round two, and I don't need no hints still, all right? And we're going to be playing as Russia this time around, and we're going to see what we can do. I, I think we're, we're going to do a much better job, because our flag looks... What the f what the fuck is our flag? Okay, I thought it was a good idea to join Britain's little coalition, and I remember just how well Britain did last game when I was controlling them, and I've completely realised that that's a bad idea, and instead I'm going to declare war on Sweden. Ah, oh, perfect. All of Sweden completely sieged out, and now I get to dictate a peace deal. Ah, I thought I'd be able to take a little bit more than that, but apparently I just have to fucking settle for this. Okay, so I did a quick restart just because my game crashed. I don't think it's saved right, but uh, I went ahead, I've restarted, and this time I've decided not to peace out Persia, but to instead take them out. Oh yes, yeah, so I'm going to annex your entire country in this peace deal, and I, I can't take the middle profit. I can't. Well, I guess we're going to have to settle for this. Oh, uh, don't mind me. Just a quick pit stop in journey so that, you know, they don't eventually come back to kill me in a hundred years. <laughs> but seriously, they did kill 30 million of me. Well, if you thought Border Gore was bad in other Paradox games, I got a whole thing for you in this game because it's pretty fucking terrible. Oh, uh, look. The Ottomans decided to declare war on me. What a fun old time that is, considering I still have no idea how these fucking armies work. So yeah, everyone's uh, everyone's declaring war on me right now. The Prussians, you know, understandably want their land back, but I'm not giving it to them. The Swedes, they're just, they're going ham, and the Ottomans have just walked halfway into my country with, like, 20,000 troops. Oh, there go the Ottomans. We get ourselves a... I, I'm just making the world look absolutely terrible, but what does it matter? So, it's 1821 and technically the game is over, but I did realise I haven't really beat anyone of importance, namely France. But then I also realised I'm Russia and I can just create a shit ton of troops, so it doesn't matter if my armies are shit, I'll just create a horde! Oh my god, it's absolutely fucking beautiful. Good thing I turned those trees off, right? My game would be lagging pretty hard right about now, I think. Ah, oh, yes, superior Turkish battle manoeuvres where we all get in a circle and let the enemy pick us off one by one while we all flail around crazily like it's a fun old party. Well, my death stacks didn't last too long because apparently infantry doesn't do that well against people with things like horses or artillery or just any form of gun that's not running at the enemy with a stick. One thing I didn't know about March of the Eagles after looking up a guide on how to build armies is that you actually have to set your flanks and all of these different tactics they can use in battle and... <laughs> I... <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, I'm a little overwhelmed and I'm probably gonna... Oh, F4. Well, this game was a pile of trash, not because I'm so bad at it, because it's just, it's just bad, right? Okay, I don't have to justify why the game's bad, it's just bad. Zero out of ten IGN, alright, but I, I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, I hope you've hit the subscribe button. 
so that we I could give away a copy of March of the Eagles at 200,000 and 212,000 subscribers. I've already hit 200,000. Fuck. But regardless, I hope you all hit the, the, the like button because this was a fun, different video. And um, oh, everyone leave a comment down below telling me your favourite March of the Eagles moment. And maybe you can win a free copy of March of the Eagles, which isn't so much a prize as much as it is an eternal torment that's going to be looking at you in your Steam library forever and ever and let you know that it's a piece of shit and draw you down till you're nothing.